Time for book reviews! Hello everyone and welcome to Fort Master's vlog for the Warmer for the Fasten Gaming System. Go to the Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 237th book review of this vlog. Today I'm reviewing the short stories called Kaldor Drago, Knight of Titan and The Ghost Halls, both written by LJ Goulding. They are connected in that they are both about the Grey Knights. And because one of the stories here features the Eldar or Dark Eldar, they will be part of this year's Eldbruari. We can begin with the front cover for Caldo Drago. On it we simply see the marking of the Grey Knights. It's quite boring, so I will give it a 2 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. A warrior without a war, a wanderer in eternity, a man shaped by destiny, but whose destiny is yet to take shape. Caldor Drago is all of this and more. Lost in the infernal other realm, of the warp and doomed to battle the forces of chaos for all time, the warrior once led the Grey Knight chapter to war is now a legion of one, with all the demonic servants of the ruinous powers arrayed against him. So before we get into the actual short, we should look at the background of Kaldor Drago. He is a character introduced in the infamous Codex Grey Knights that create the hate storm against the writer Matt Ward and change the policy at, at Games Workshop that all of written codexes will be anonymous. It appeared everywhere. I even recalled an old Flash animation video that is most likely banned on YouTube these days for nudity and usage of drugs. So Drago became the Supreme Grandmaster in 901M41 during the Battle of Akralem. He fought against the Demon Prince Emkar on the Swirling Warp Rift. He defeats Emkar, but not before being pulled into the warp where he has to constantly fight off demons. He is trapped there, and while he cannot be corrupted nor defeated, neither can he truly win as the demons always come back. And even at those times when he can return to the real space, it's only under the conditions as long as the warp portal is open, or else he is sucked back once again. So many hated this idea as he comes across as a sort of Mary Sue or a perfect character. And while I can agree he has done really impossible feats, I love this backstory. Like it cannot be more depressing than this. Also this is a fictional world where people do impossible things all the time. Goulding has written about Kaldor in a previous outer drama that I have reviewed called Mortarion's Heart that I recommend that you listen to before this. This brings us to this short story, which was released as a part of the Lords of the Space Marines series in 2013 as a part of the advent calendar for that year. The story is written in a first person point of view. Kaldor Drago is a lone wanderer that has to conserve his ammunition or else he might be in trouble. He reflects that each shot that he has fired he has regretted. As he walks over to the slaughtered demon that begins to dissipate, he wonders if the tyrant, the overfiend, the skull taker or any of the other thousand demons he has killed. He reflects upon the meaningless existence he has ended up in and how it was brought upon him. Because he is definitely cursed, so I imagine it might be the chaos gods that them all made sure that he would be stuck in such a place. And it ends on that note. So what did I think about this short story? Well, I think it's a think piece uh, looking into the psyche of a character, but it's way too short to be worth buying alone. If you find it in any type of collection, then go for it. But it will not offer you much more than that. I will give this short story a 5 out of 10 forks. We can end this with the Ghost Halls. It was part of the Angels of Deaths released back in 2013, which I all think were 1000 words each story. On the front cover we see a lone grey knight, as in the style with the rest of this series. It's boring and empty and very cartoonish. 
I would give this front cover a 2 out of 10 forks, let's see what this door is all about. In silent ruins of a devastated Eldar craft world, most unusual figures stand vigil. Brother Captain Pelinas awaits the arrival of the mysterious aliens to reclaim what is theirs. But why are he and his Grey Knight purifiers waiting for the Eldar? And will they be able to achieve their, their mission without bloodshed? So this takes place in the ruined Eldar craft world Malantai, where Brother Captain Pelinas and his Grey Knight purifiers are awaiting. They are greeted by an Eldar seer who berates them for trespassing. Pelinas asks for forgiveness after introducing himself and he says he seeks no conflict with the Eldar, but as a demon expert such as himself is, he hands over some Eldar soul stones that he took from a banished place that wrecked the craft world. This surprised the Eldar at this act of kindness. They ask what they can give in return. Pelinas' kindness turns into bitterness as he reveals one of their number died so they could defeat the demon. The one who died was named Anval Fawn, to which the eyes of the Eldar widened at the mere mention of his name. As they return to their own craft world, they send a message that the monkey have rediscovered the last perpetual, who have arisen in the ranks of the Grey Knights. To give some context for this, perpetuals were a thing created by Dan Abnett in the Horus Heresy when he introduced several humans that are essentially immortal. They come back from death each time. The Emperor is heavily alluded to be one of these. Outside of the Horus Heresy, they have rarely been featured with the exception of Anval Fawn. As just like Kaldor Drago, he was introduced in the same codex. He is a Grey Knight who have survived against great odds where his brothers did not on many occasions. His death at the hands of the great demon Nankari had resulted in his death but upon returning back to a titan, he was alive again. According to the Codex, this immortality is more a curse than a blessing, as over the years he has seen mankind go darker to its eventual doom, and nothing he alone can do will stop it. So, what did I think about this short story? Well, so while being an overpowered character, it comes with a great price. It's similar to that of Highlander that immortality isn't something to look up to as a gift in the long run. It only comes with the expectance of pain. This short story, once again, uh, comes with a slice of life from the Codex. It was a decent short story once again, but without the context of the Codex and the very short content that it is, it's a little bit hollow. Read it if you get it in a collection of stories. It's not worth getting on your own. I will also give this short story a 5 out of 10 folks, and with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this book review. See you around everybody. Bye bye.